One of the quickest ways to lose your love for the game in college is when you realize that it's a business. I know you thought it was all about the love for the game and I played this game when I was a kid and it's going to be all fun and whoever who's, who's best on the team is going to get the most playing time and everything's going to be even and fair and equal. I know that's what you're thinking, but the fact remains is it's, it's a business, all of it, and everyone's in on it but you. Today I'm going to give you five things that's going to help you navigate the waters of not only being a student athlete, but also the business of being a student athlete. These five things are going to save you so much grief moving forward. The first thing I want you to learn is it's not personal. Anything that happens, it is, you being a student athlete, it's not personal. You don't get playing time, it's not personal. You get benched, it's not personal. You get cut, it's not personal. You get a little less scholarship money, you get a little bit more scholarship money, it's not personal. You bring something to the table, right? It's a business transaction. You bring something to the table that's desirable and they give you exchange, and there's an exchange, right? There's an exchange where that be Playing time, whether that be money as far as scholarships, whether it be whatever it is, there, there, there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a business transaction happening. And I want you to understand this. And this is no shot against any coaches out there, okay? Because I tell you, as a person that failed the sixth grade in the eighth grade special education classes, there's many teachers when I was in elementary schools that couldn't get, couldn't get across to me, okay? But for whatever reason, coaches were able to do that. So this is not a shot against coaches. But hear me when I say this. Coaches are businessmen and businesswomen with whistles, okay? I know you, you have this glamorized deal of like, oh, he's going to be a father figure to me, and I'm going to look up to him, and at my wedding, he's going to be there. And you know, Listen, some of those things can happen, but I don't want you going in there with the mentality that it's a guarantee. It's kind of like what we tell students when they come to college and they want their roommates to be their best man or, or, or groomsmen at the, at, at the weddings, right? Can those things happen? Absolutely. They, they, they can happen. But if you go in that if you go in there and, and think that every one of your roommates is going to be your best man or your best friend or your groomsman, you're setting yourself up a failure. Okay? So I want your coach to be a father figure to you, but you don't give it to that person off the jump. That's not what happens, okay? That per that, that can only be seen after you graduate. That can only be seen in your rear view if that person earns to be earns the right to be called a father figure. Off the jump, that person's a businessman. Off the jump, that person's a businesswoman. And they happen to have a whistle around their neck. And this is a business transaction. You need to realize that you bring something to the, to the table, and they bring something to the table. It needs to be a mutual interest for that transaction to happen. If that's not the case, that's not business. And you need to understand that it's not personal. Don't be getting any feelings. I see so many people getting, getting their feelings about what they feel like is owed to them, or what they deserve, or, or, or this or that. And it's not... It's not personal. Number two, the second business tip I would like to give you as a student athlete is realizing that you're only as strong as the team that's surrounding you. All right, so you hang around bums, scrubs, people that don't go to class, people that don't care anything about excelling outside of their sport, they're just there. That's going to affect you, okay? That's going to affect you, much like if you're playing basketball and you're, you're playing against nothing but scrubs on a regular basis. That's going to... And, you're playing against nothing but scrolls on, on a regular basis. What's going to happen is you start building up poor habits. You start being lazy on defense. You start not, not actually being intentional about the passes you make and the shots you take. You start building bad habits. The same is to be said in the world of business as it relates to student athlete. You are only strong, you're only as strong as, your, as the people that surround you. So if you're around some lackluster individuals and some people that are not ambitious, then that's going to affect you and that's going to affect your decision making. The third student athlete business tip I'm going to give you is come to work to work. Come to work to work. You got to realize that this is an opportunity that not a lot of people get. So if this is an opportunity that everybody doesn't get, then you have to approach it in the sense of gratitude and you cherish this moment for you to actually be in this moment because it can be taken from you quickly, right? Everybody's just right around the corner from an injury, right around the corner from being cut, right around. Like these things can happen to anybody. So if you have this opportunity, then you want to make sure you bring that business mentality of, I have this opportunity right in front of me. I don't know what's going to be the next day, but I know I have this and I got to bring my hard hat, my lunch pail every day and go to work. And I expect that from the people that I work with as well. Fourth business student athlete tip would be you have to be able to leverage um, being a student athlete. I don't think a lot of people understand that you, just, just your existence of being on a team gives you 
an advantage that you would have that you wouldn't have if you weren't on the team. Okay, there are people on your campus right now that wouldn't have anything to do with you if you didn't if you weren't a student athlete. If that's going to be the case, then I want you to leverage why you still have that position on campus, knowing good and well that if you didn't have that position, if you weren't that football player or basketball player or baseball player, that they wouldn't know your name, then you need to be able to expand upon those relationships while you are a student athlete. The worst decision you can make is be like a lot of us were when we were student athletes, and that is only conversate with people that are student athletes. Only conversate with coaches. Only conversate with people who are part of the whatever a, uh, athletic building that you're a part of with, with, with the games and things like that. You need to be making sure that you leverage the, those. You need to be making sure that you leverage your influence while you're in college and connect with people that have nothing to do with your sport. That'll give you a wider net. That'll give you a wider uh, network that you wouldn't have to be able to tap into if you weren't a student athlete, okay? So that's some leverage there. I don't think a lot of student athletes know how much leverage they do have when they're in that position. You automatically have a network because you have coaches and athletic directors that are rocking with you and want the very best for you, hopefully. And if you have that, I would just build upon that and make sure you just throw out a, a wider net so you can, you can have a wider network for future situations. Six, I'll give you one more. And that is this. And you, you've seen this as well. You know, right now we're in the year of 2021. We, uh, we're still dealing with cancel culture. When someone doesn't like what you say, they don't want you to make money. They don't want you to live anymore. They don't want anything. Uh, they don't want you to be on TV, any of that stuff. But I want you to take a note out of that book and realize that sponsorships can be taken away from you based off not only what you do, but the people you hang around with. You know, I have a buddy in, 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 in college um, and he played football. And when we went, when they came to basketball games, <clears throat> man, Rob, he wouldn't even he wouldn't even sit with other football players. He wouldn't even sit with other football players because he didn't want to be mixed in the crowd with other football players because they were up to some sh shenanigans and he didn't want to be lumped in that sum. He went even so far to tell teachers when teachers used to be like, uh, so Rob, uh, what sport do you play? Now if you got to know Rob to, to know how crazy this sounds. This guy's jacked in the weight room every day, the, one of the biggest guys on campus, and he responds to the teachers, uh, yeah, I play tennis. <laughs> no, I'm good and well, his big mind is not going to be playing tennis. But he said that because he, he was that adamant about, I don't want to be associated with a group of individuals that may not have the best reputation. And that's what I want you to be mindful of, right? Like, don't get me wrong, you have teammates, and they may be doing some things that may not align with what you're into, your teammates on the floor. That's the only things you have to be. You have to be around those individuals. I've had several teammates that have that have had some, let's just say, extracurricular activities outside of the extracurricular activity of their sport that I wasn't jiving with. That I don't have to hang around with them outside of of, of the gym. I don't have to do that. They have their life. I have my life. And my thing is, when you when you start associating yourself with people doing things that you know they shouldn't be doing or doing things that that, that, that doesn't pass the eye test, optics-wise, it doesn't look good, you stand a chance of blowing some opportunities that you didn't even know you had afforded to you. So not only your actions, but also the people that you surround yourself. I get, I'll give you two more, because I, if, I, if I stay on this camera any longer, I'll keep coming up with more and more tips that's gonna help you. My second to the last one, not the last one, but my second to the last one, my seventh tip I would say is make sure you know your numbers on, co on your college campus. So that means how much does your scholarship cover? Okay, not only the numbers, but the analytics behind it, the details, right? The devil's in the details, the details as far as scholarship is concerned. What does it cover? How does it cover it? Is there a way I can void the scholarship? If I, if I don't make this particular GPA, does that cancel my scholarship? You know these kind of things. Pell Grant, do, do I get Pell Grant? Am I eligible for Pell Grant? Uh, financial aid, where am I going to be staying? How much does it cost? How much is the meal plan? How many swipes do I get a day? And then you need to break down your scholarship from the standpoint of how much is the actual athletic scholarship and how much of it is, is other aid coming from different areas. Because a lot of times we talk about full ride scholarships and we think it's all coming from one pot and oftentimes it's not. If you're coming from Oklahoma and you're going to, a, you're going to um, Texas, and it's a sister state, you may get some money just based off that added to your scholarship. You may think it's a, it's a full ride, and it's not It's not a full ride from all one pot. It's still a full ride, but it's, it's not from all one pot. You need to make sense of all that, okay? And my last tip I'll give you is this. If none of that stuff makes sense, which a lot of it doesn't when you get into college and you want to fake like it, it all makes sense because you want to seem like you're an adult and you got it all together, ask questions. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. Ask plenty of them. Ask plenty of questions. This is probably by far the biggest 
uh, tip of them off as far as being a student athlete and, and having that business mentality is ask questions. No one came in this world knowing all the, the answers to the questions that, uh, that they know. No one came in this world knowing all the answers to the questions you have once you go to college. You feel silly because you're around adults and they've been doing it for years, but you shouldn't feel silly. And you shouldn't feel silly because at the end of the day, it's going to be on your bill at the end of the day. And, and, and you say, well, Belmont on a four-hour scholarship. It's still going to be on your bill. In the sense of you, you, you've, you've um, expended time being in that situation. So you're going to either spend time, you're going to spend time, energy, patience, blood, sweat, tears, and some money. So no one walks out of there without spending one of those things at least. So if that's going to be the case, then shouldn't you know how things work? Shouldn't you be asking questions? Why would you be embarrassed about asking questions about things that's going to affect you? You should be asking those questions. And if you have this mentality that I'm giving you, if you, if, you, if, if you wrap all this stuff down, if you have this mentality as far as not only just being a student athlete, but also having that business mind, you'll walk away not, not feeling any type of regret about what you should have done. Okay? Ask those, ask those questions. Make sense of this stuff. You'll go a lot further and you'll be a lot happier when it's all said and done.